Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share how I improved my LSAT score by 23 points, most of that increase coming from the Logic Games section. I started off with a cold 152 on my initial diagnostic, but I ended up improving my LSAT score to a 175. Now, I majored in political science. Math was not my thing. I was strictly a humanities, English, and history kind of guy. And so Logic Games were an incredibly difficult section for me at first. I could not make head or tail of them, but they ended up being my best section as I took test after test and ultimately achieved a 175 on my actual official LSAT exam. So how did I make that increase? In this video, I'm going to share some of the key insights that led me to get that significant score increase all the way from a 152 to a 175, a score that can get you into top law schools like Harvard, Yale, Stanford, and such. Here's what I did. First off, I learned to make inferences up front. Rather than simply jumping into the game with an initial diagram and some rules, I took the time to pause and slow down, and I figured out how can I connect different rules together? For example, if you see the same variable featured in multiple rules, that is a major indication that you can likely make some kind of inference by connecting those rules together, considering them in conjunction. What additional new information can you yield? Of course, LSAC is not looking for you to simply brute force or plug and chug variables to help you solve a game. They're looking for your ability to make deductions, to make inferences, to engage in that deductive reasoning where you can get more efficient in your approach to the game by looking at rules side by side together. Secondly, I learned to approach questions out of order. There is no reason to approach logic games questions simply in the order given because that's how LSAC gave them to you. I do recommend doing the orientation question first. That is your gimme warm-up question, which asks you simply, which one of the following would be a valid scenario when considering the rules? Do that first. That provides you with an example of a valid scenario, but then I would only do the local if questions next. The ones asking, for example, if X is on slot three, then what must be true? Or if A is second, what must be true? You use those questions next because they give you that jumping off point with the if statement, prompting you to make a new diagram typically. And then those again, lead you to more valid scenarios you can use to help you solve other questions later in the game. Which brings me to my next tip that I learned, which was to reuse previous hypothetical scenarios. Reuse your previous work. Your correct answer to the orientation question, any local if question diagrams that you make, all of those will help you solve the general global questions, which I would typically do next. The ones that just ask you in an open-ended way, which one of the following could be true or which one of the following must be true. Now, several years back, I would have ended the video here, but there is one more type of question I would do after all of those, which is your rule substitution question. Now, this wasn't on the exam back when I took it, but it's appeared on nearly every single exam since LSAT prep test 57. So I will give you some advice on these as well that I've gained from not from my own LSAT experience, but rather from my 15 plus years experience teaching this exam. Rule substitution questions, AKA rule equivalency questions might seem difficult because they appear somewhat infrequently, but they actually appear consistently on nearly every single exam since prep test 57, for reference, there are nearly 40 exams released since then. We're now in the 90s. So you have literally dozens of examples of these questions to practice on. So here's what I would do. I would do as a drill, the initial setup for the game, and then only the rule sub question associated with that game. By drilling rule substitution questions in this way, you will be better able to see the patterns and how to approach them. You're looking, of course, for an answer choice that is no more limiting than the original rules and no less limiting than the original rules, one well, that would have an identical consequence. And by the way, all your previous valid scenarios will be helpful for you here as well. So in a sense, this does relate to my own LSAT journey because I was big on reusing previous work. That was a lesson that I learned. Additionally, drilling LSAT questions, whether specific question types like rule substitution questions or game types like ordering, grouping, and such is enormously helpful to better see the patterns in terms of how to approach questions like this. So to quickly recap here, make inferences up front, reuse previous hypothetical scenarios, approach questions out of order, orientation, local, global, and then of course, rule substitution questions. And finally, 
drill questions by type or game types to better see the patterns in terms of how to approach them. Anyway, folks, it's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. Maybe you know someone struggling with logic games and this video could make the difference for them in achieving a similar score increase to what I did. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.